Okay, this week we're going to be discussing color in Photoshop. Um, all right, let's start by opening an image into Photoshop. I'm going to use the file open command and we will pull up an image and get it into Photoshop. So the first thing to take notice of um, is that all digital images are made up of uh, a certain combination of colors. Uh, if you've taken a picture on a camera and loaded it up into Photoshop, your image is going to be in the RGB color mode. Your color mode can be found uh, under the image menu uh, and then under the mode feature up at the top there. Uh, and we can see that this is in fact already set to RGB, which is pretty common. Um, so when you create an image, a digital image, it's made up of combination of red, green, and blue. Different tones, different values of those blended together to create all of the millions upon millions upon millions of other uh, colors that are in your image. And if we zoom in, we can start to see those colors. Uh, here we've zoomed into the pixel level and we can see each individual pixel is just one single color. Uh, we can see all the different various shades here that each pixel is to create that continuous skin tone that we can see when we zoom back out. Um, now I've clicked on channels, uh, my channels panel, which is right beside layers. If you can't see your channels panel, check under the window menu and make sure that channels is checked. Uh, these are all different panels uh, that you can view in Photoshop. We're looking at the channels one. Um, each individual channel here, um, it has different values that you can turn on and off. Uh, we can see just the reds if we wanted to. It's where all the it's represented by the darker parts of the image. Uh, we can see the greens and we can also see the blues there. And if we turn them all on, the image looks normal. Now check this out. If I click on the reds, go to my move tool, move them over a little bit, click on the greens, move them over a little bit, and click on the blues, move them over a little bit, then turn all the channels back on, you can kind of see how that works. And if I click on them and try to, let's try to realign them. When I get them aligned back up, and you, it's really hard to get it exactly perfect, um, you can see that it does start to look like an actual full color image again. But if I move them over, we lose that ability. Um, so yeah, you can see that red, green, and blue combined give you uh, all of the different possible color combinations. Now, that's for uh, digital images, which is most of the time what we're talking about. But when you go to take a digital image and make it appear in the real world, AKA print it, um, we have to switch the color mode. And most printers will do this for you automatically, uh, which is really the best process to do that. Um, and you switch the color mode from RGB to CMYK, uh, which is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Uh, K for the K at the end of uh, the word black. That's why whenever you buy ink for your printer, you're not buying red, green, and blue ink. You're buying cyan, magenta, yellow, and black ink. Sometimes light cyan, sometimes light magenta, depending on uh, the printer that you're purchasing. And if I click on channels, we can see right over here that we no longer have red, green, and blue or RGB. We have CMYK up at the top and then cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And we can do the same thing here, which actually let's, let's pull up a different image. We'll do it with something else. Let's go to this picture. We'll drag and drop it. Um, we'll convert the color mode to CMYK. We're not going to worry about that. Go over to our channels, and I'm going to click on the cyans, move it over a little bit, click on the magentas, move them over a little bit, click on the yellows, uh, and then we can leave the blacks where they are. But when I turn the whole thing back on, we can see uh, where everything was. Now, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, this is what we call a subtractive uh, color model. Um, it, it really refers to how colors combine, um, and we're not really going to get into that much uh, too much right now. RGB is an additive color model because those are all primary colors. Cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. This is a subtractive color model because they are in between uh, the reds, the greens, and the blues there. Um, all right, we are going to go back to RGB and we will close this image out. Uh, let's open up a blank document. So I'm going to click on create new. And we'll wait for my new document dialog box to pop up. 
And let's go to Art Illustration. This time we will just create a 18 by 24 inch poster. 300 for the PPI or resolution. Um, PPI stands for pixels per inch. Resolution is pretty much the same thing. Those terms are basically interchangeable. We don't want to get into the weeds on the details between them. Um, all right, so this is a blank document. So it's just got a white background layer. I'm going to make a blank layer. Let's say that I did not want my background layer to be white. Let's say that I wanted um, a basis of a different color. I'm going to click on my um, adjustment layer down here and I'm gonna click on solid color. That's going to create a solid color fill layer. Whenever I click on that, it brings up what we call my color picker. Um, your color picker is what Photoshop uses to allow you to explore all the different millions upon millions of colors that you could create or use um, in Photoshop. So the way this works, you've probably already played around with it. Uh, this is called the, the color cube, I believe, in Photoshop. It has, Photoshop actually has a couple of ways uh, that you can display colors, um, but the color picker uses this one. We can drag it up and down over here on the side. And a lot of the time people think that this is how you pick the color, um, but this is just showing you different colors over here in the square. Um, but let's say that I want like a, a nice yellow color. I would pull this down here to the yellows and then I have to figure out which instance of yellow that I want over here. Um, so there's there's three different parts to a color um, in Photoshop. There's the hue, which is what I'm playing around with over here. These are all my different hues. And then there's the saturation, which is really the left to right over here in uh, my color picker square. And then there's the luminance or lightness value, which is how bright or dark that color is, which is top to bottom over here in the cube. Um, that's why whenever you click on a hue saturation adjustment layer, you notice it's not just two things, not just hue and saturation, there's also lightness down there, which changes the, the basically the brightness value of that color. Saturation is like that, and then hue kind of shifts the color all over the place. Um, let's get rid of my hue saturation layer. So the color picker is, is pretty darn important. Um, but let's say that I'm, I'm working on a file with a couple of other people. And uh, I want to ensure, let's say, let's say we're making a logo for a company. Our company is going to be called, um, let's see, Colorful Designs. And we will resize that to be a little bit bigger, say 36. Well, let's go bigger than that, let's go 72. There we go. Okay, uh, let's actually change the color of this font. Highlighted my text. You can do that by double clicking the uh, T over here in your thumbnail. And then up here in the options bar, we're clicking on the white box. It's only white because my text is currently white. Um, pulls up the color picker, which is going to allow us to change the color uh, of our font. I kind of like this cyanish blue um, that I'm going for. So let's say that I really liked this design and I wanted somebody else to utilize the same design. Let's make this a little bit more logo-like. Put a little box around it. Um, we'll get rid of the inside. We'll make a, a stroke. Um, okay, and we'll make the stroke blue. Stroke is the, the outside edge there, that same color. Um, so I have this design that I've made um, and I want to ensure that somebody else that is used, that is in my company gets the exact same colors. I'm not just going to say, hey, use a yellow background and have a, a light blue or a cyan color for the text and the, and the outline. I want to ensure that they get the exact same colors. Um, that's where what we call hex codes comes in. So I'm going to pull up the yellow background again. Um, this is my color picker. There's several different uh, items in here that can help somebody ensure that they get the exact same color, and that's these combinations over here. How much red, how much green, and how much blue. Um, we have the lab colors over there, the cyan, magenta, yellows, and blacks. Um, but the, really the thing that designers like to utilize is what we call hex codes. And that's down there at the bottom where we see the pound sign or hashtag symbol, depending on how old you are. Um, so this one is f 8 ff 8 F. And literally, if I 
or to copy that and send that in an email and say, hey, the hex code for the color yellow I want is F8F8F. Um, somebody else, when they open up Photoshop, like, let's do this again. If I click on this again, click on solid color, what they can do is come down here and type that out. What was it? F8, F, F, 8, F, and it pulls up the exact same color. So that's how you can ensure that designers, multiple designers will get the exact same color information. Let's do the same thing with the blue. So what we can do is we can come over here, highlight our text again, we'll pull it back up. Here's our color picker. Uh, and here's the hex code for that color blue, 5FF6DB. Every single color has a hex code. Code because it's a code, hex because it has six different alphanumeric um, characters there that make up each color combination. If I drag this around, you can see uh, that the hex code will actually change for each one. Feel free to type in your birthday, see what your birthday color is, um, but I'm just going to hit cancel and uh, and leave it as that. So you can send um, people different color combinations using hex codes. Uh, another important um, way to use that, if you're not so great with knowing what colors look good together, is uh, to use the internet to your advantage. So I will demonstrate hex code combinations. We're just gonna Google image search hex code combinations and check this out. Um, the internet wants to help you. If you're trying to come up with a good color palette for a design, search good hex code combinations. That was a little bit small for me to read. Oh, it's opening up Pinterest. Let's see if we can open it up a little bit bigger. Open image and new tab. There we go. Um, so let, let's grab this. Let's say that we wanted uh, this kind of light orange, FFD3B5. We'll go back to Photoshop and we'll change this. FFD3B5. Pulls up that nice light orange, uh, which it also says would pair well with um, this kind of mint green up at the top, which is A8E6CE. -E. Let's try that. A, 8, E, 6, C, E. And there we go. Now, the, the capitalization doesn't really matter. But, um, okay, so I've got that color there. I didn't change the box, and that's because I want to show you something else. If you're using um, lots of the same, if you're using the same color quite often, you normally want to save that hex code so you're not having to manually type it out all the time. And in Photoshop, Colors are saved as what we call swatches. If you can't find your swatch panel, always check under the window menu up at the top. Make sure swatches is, is selected. Um, let's, let's demonstrate what that would look like if it's not. So I'm gonna close out this panel and I can't see it anywhere. Window, click on swatches and that will pull it up. If it's a panel that you're gonna use a lot, you normally want to dock it somewhere, which is uh, kind of putting it in a specific space. I'm gonna dock it over here with the color panel so I'm clicking on the name, dragging it over here on uh, on this on top of this other panel until it is get until it's completely highlighted um, with this blue outline. I can now drop it and my swatches panel has been docked with my color panel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this color um, and in order to select this color, I'm going to use the eyedropper tool. Uh, the eyedropper tool is a tool in your toolbar that looks literally like an eyedropper. Um, it's right over here. And it's not previewing to me how to use it, but it, it might do that for you. What the eyedropper tool is useful for is for selecting colors that are in your document. Um, so what I want to do is I want to pull out the color that my text currently is. So I'm going to select the eyedropper tool and I'm just going to click on the text. What that does is it changes my foreground color um, to the color that I clicked on in the eyedropper tool. Let's take a pause and demonstrate that on a different image. So if I got my eyedropper tool, watch my color panel down here, all I'm, or my foreground uh, color box, I'm gonna click and drag, and notice how it changes depending on what I'm hovering over. That's how my eyedropper tool works. Let's go back to this. I wanna click on that, any of the text, but I'm gonna click on the C. Now I'm gonna come up over here to my swatches, and I'm gonna click the Create New Swatch button, so what it does is it takes the foreground color that we have selected. That's why I had to select this color first. Um, and if I click on that, it will say, hey, 
you want to uh, add a name for that color swatch. So I'm going to call it Colorful Designs Logo Color. Um, it can also add it to your current library. Um, so now I have that in my swatches. It added it right down there at the bottom. It also pulled my library up, but I'm not really worried about that right now. So now I can click on the rectangle if I wanted to change the color of it, um, which I've got selected right over here. Got my rectangle tool selected. I'm going to have that same layer selected as well. And we already know that that was the stroke color, which is the outside edge. That's why there's nothing in the middle. Um, and if I want to change it, I'm just going to click on the stroke color in the options bar. Uh, and then that it, it automatically does pull up my swatches. And that uh, logo color swatch is just down there at the bottom. If I hover over the name, it will display it for me. These are the default ones. But I just want my colorful designs logo color, and it will automatically apply it to my design. Um, so there, we've just uh, talked about how to use hex codes in Photoshop, how to create swatches in Photoshop, how to use the eyedropper tool in Photoshop as well. So those are some basics uh, with using color in Photoshop.